everyone. I'm Donna Bush with your CID TV News Brief on this Tuesday. As we reported last Thursday, after nearly two decades at its previous location, the Sunrise Adult Training Center is now located in Eden House in Georgetown. We spoke with Director Kim Voden about the benefits of moving the center to a more centralized location. Here's what she had to say. We definitely outgrew and needed to come more centrally. Um, and just the sheer numbers on our wait list alone um, and the need to expand what we're offering our clients um, and, you know, the benefit of being in town surrounded by poten more potential employment partners, um, internship opportunities, um, being more visible for the public just so that they're aware that we exist and of the great talents of our clients and the great work that we do here at the centre. Inclusion is also about, like, educating and making making people aware, um, huge part of it. So we're just grateful to be in, in the mix, in the middle of the heart of town. <laughs> and we love our new neighborhood, we love our neighbors, um, and we're grateful to be here. Many government officials attended the opening ceremony, including Minister for Our Social Development, the Honorable Andre Ebanks, who all toured the new facility. Sunrise clients are adults over the age of 18 who have a broad range of special needs by providing vocational training, therapeutic services, case management services, and a recreational day program. The center aims to enable all of its clients to become empowered, productive, and fully included members of the community. Clients are also able to showcase their creative sides through artwork and performing in the center's annual onstage musical. Now, currently, the center supports 35 clients in its day program and 23 clients who are in their work paid employment in the community. The Sunrise Adult Center has been in operation for 35 years. In news from Kim and Brack, the Department of Environment has been carrying out a Brack Parrot Survey to determine whether the per population of the bird is on the increase or is decreasing. Researchers tell us that after Hurricane Paloma back in 2008, they saw a decrease in the number of brack parrots because their natural habitat, which is protected, was destroyed. The reason why that's important is because it is the most narrow range restricted Amazon parrot in the world. So it sounds like a lot and it, it really is. It is a great responsibility to look after this subpopulation because it is so limited in space to Cayman Brack. And not only is it limited to this small island, it's also limited to specific habitat, particularly for nesting, because the parrots are cavity nesters. So they need circumference in the trees. They need big enough, tall enough, fat enough trees to go in, go down and nest. And unfortunately, we're losing that habitat to storms and to development, um, as well as other threats. It's hard to sometimes get your mind around how do you count all the parrots on an island. And we don't, of course, we don't see all of them. But what we can do is we can statistically infer the populations as well as the densities around points. So we have just over 100 points scattered across the island. And we go to point zero and from there we spend six minutes and we literally record everything we see or hear. Um, and we record the distance to the focal species, in this case the parrots. Jane Hackison says if any back-to-back -back storms occur, the Brack parrot population could be lost forever. She added that residents on the Brack can do their part in protecting the Brack parrot. She encourages developers and property owners to not remove native plants and trees like the birch tree and sea grape trees from their properties because the birds use them for nesting as well as for food. Turning to our weather now, weather-wise tonight we can expect partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of late night showers. Temperatures will fall to the mid-70s. Seas will be slight to moderate with wave heights up 2 to 4 feet. The two-day outlook is for continued periods of cloudiness and showers through Thursday afternoon as the upper level trough lingers over the Western Caribbean. Now the synopsis calls for moderate to fresh northeasterly winds with moderate to rough seas which are expected across the Cayman Islands area for the next 24 hours as a high-pressure system moves over the central United States. A reminder for the latest unexpected local weather conditions, you can go online to weather.gov.ky. And that's it for today's News Brief. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a safe and wonderful night, and inviting you back here again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye for now.
Seek the latest accurate information on COVID-19 only from official sources at gov.ky forward slash coronavirus.